Right after the Battle of York, its defenders moved to the west side of Garrison Creek and built the fort that survives today. Uh, the inside of the walls today are all clad with stone. That wouldn't have been the case from its earliest days. They were earthworks shored up with logs and timber. If you had jumped over the south wall in 1814 or 1815, you would have come very close to falling right into Toronto Harbour. The remains of more than 16 original buildings have been found, and seven of the eight oldest buildings constructed in the city are here and intact. We have blockhouse number one at the east end of the fort, blockhouse number two in the center of the fort, two brick barracks at the west end of the fort, the officers mess establishment and barracks here, the junior officers barracks, and we have two uh, magazines, the stone magazine and the brick magazine. The miracle of Fort York in, in one way is that it survived at all in any condition, and yet when we come into the oldest surviving buildings anywhere in the city, we actually see um, details of a very rare um, architectural elements like uh, paneling and, and window shutters. The officer's mess, built in 1815 and later restored, includes some famous English china. We found um, pieces of this outside the building so that we know it was used inside the building uh, by the soldiers or the officers that lived here. And so um, the proper dishes were purchased to, to furnish this building as part of the restoration. The uh, stonework. They found ceilings and a cellar, along with a complex system of drains and a well. Archaeologists have also unearthed the foundations of the original governor's residence, and some of his china destroyed during the Battle of York. Inside the house when it was actually attacked and burned by the Americans, and it, it fell into the ground and we've been able to recover um, pieces of it and glue it back. There's an officer's cup dating back to Simcoe's log barracks of 1793, and heavy timbers of the wharves that once stretched south from Front Street into the harbour. And to prevent enemies from storming the walls, there are ditches, a moat, and palisades of sharpened wooden posts. Fort York National Historic Site also comprises the Fort York Armouries, built in the 1930s, and Victoria Square Memorial Cemetery, where Simcoe's youngest daughter was buried in the 1790s. The 43-acre site includes two cemeteries. It includes the walled portion of the fort, and it includes an area that we refer to as the common, or the garrison common. I, I think, just in general, that, that people don't realize how significant Fort York is, that this is the, the real deal. This is an authentic War of 1812 site. It's right under our noses in downtown Toronto. Um, we just need to appreciate it for what it is and, and we need to protect it and we need to bring the site to life in, in, in meaningful ways for, for residents and visitors alike. I'm roasting the pork and I'm demonstrating how you can do it with, uh, on strings and with sticks because that's one last cast iron pot you have to carry. Exploring Fort York, you can appreciate the life and times of the soldiers. And every year on Remembrance Day, people gather to commemorate the Battle of York and pay their respects to the British, American and native soldiers who gave their lives in the War of 1812, a war that saw America and Canada come of age and establish their future. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.